poultry farmers are facing very many problems in the poultry business. And one of them is the price of the feeds. Sometimes the prices of the feeds may shoot very high. And the other one is the poultry diseases. But in today's video, we will be zeroing down to poultry diseases. How can we prevent the spread of poultry diseases in our poultry farms? So guys, get ready for that. My name is Jacob, a passionate farmer about poultry keeping. On this channel, we talk about poultry farming in general. We talk about the layers, broilers, the local chicken, the ducks, the geese, the guinea fowl. In fact, any kind of poultry, you will find it on this channel. So if you have been one of the people that have been looking for channels that can teach you on how you can run a poultry farm successfully, then you're very lucky because you're in the right area. But before, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel. And if you find the content that I'm giving you is very beneficial to you, do me a favor, click that like button. And don't forget to hit the notification bell. That way you'll never miss out in case I upload any new video. Thanks for doing that. So guys, when it comes to poultry diseases, for instance, let me first cite an example to the human beings. Like in my country, the most common disease is malaria. So malaria is now everywhere. Malaria is there. So we must find a way how we can prevent this malaria from attacking us. So we should sleep under the mosquito nets. We should like have drugs, stuff like that. The same applied to poultry. There are those diseases which are now there. But it is now left to us to actually take measures to prevent this disease from spreading into our poultry farms. So the first thing that we should do to prevent the spread of diseases into our poultry farm is by not allowing farm visits at your poultry farm. Do not allow farm visits. Yeah, the moment you start allowing people to come and then see your birds, how your birds are doing, you are now breeding diseases into your poultry farms. Guys, make sure that you don't allow farm visits into your poultry farm. And if it may be, guys, make sure that you have a disinfectant on the gate on the gate so that any person who may want to come in may first dip his feet inside the disinfectant and then come inside second make sure that that person takes a bath number three guys have an overall for your poultry farm whereby if any visitor comes in he or she will first take a bath and then will change his clothes to your farm clothes that way it will help to minimize the rate at which the diseases will spread into your poultry farm. And on top of that, guys, if a person coming into your poultry farm is coming to do nothing important in the running of your poultry farm, then guys, ignore that person. Let that person not come into your poultry farm. But if it is a vet, the vet should come, but also with strict measures. The vet should follow all the biosecurity measures on your poultry farm because these vets are the same people that move to different farms every day. So you never know which kind of disease this vet is bringing from another farm into your poultry farm. Be very strict and then learn to say no, guys. Learn to say no. That's your investment. That is your money. That's an investment. So you must work tirelessly to save that money so that it can grow. Number two, guys, have a fence. Yeah, have a poultry fence in your farm. Take a look, guys. Take a look at my fence. It is locally made with bamboo and then poles and maybe some nails. It runs entirely throughout my poultry farm. So guys, with this fence, it will help you so much. For instance, me over here, I have just a road besides this farm, besides this fence. I have a road besides this fence, but with this fence over here, it is helping me so much. No one can come in that way. It is also preventing diseases from coming into my poultry farm. Guys, make sure that you have a poultry fence in your farm. Number three is vaccination. Guys, make sure that you vaccinate your birds according to the vaccination schedule given to you from the breeder farm or when you are now buying your chicks. Follow that vaccination schedule very much because when you don't vaccinate your birds, when a disease breaks out, your birds are likely to die. But if you vaccinate them, even if that kind of disease comes into your poultry farm, your birds have a higher chance of surviving this poultry disease. So 
vaccinate your birds according to the vaccination schedule given to you guys. The next one is have a sick bay on your poultry farm. Yeah, you must have a sick bay on your poultry farm. This sick bay will help you so much. How? Whenever you see that there is a bird which is not feeling well, you will pick that bird and then take it in the sick bay. That way you will be giving it treatments to prevent the spread of disease to other birds. As we all know, poultry diseases start from one bird and then spread to another bird. But you picking up this sick bird, it will help to prevent the spread of disease to other birds, guys. Have a sick bay on your poultry farm. Number five is the gene of the bird, or as some people may call it, the quality of the birds that you get into your poultry farm. When it comes to buying of day old chicks to bring to your farm, I know there are very many people out there selling birds, but make sure that you first do enough research on the birds that you want to bring inside your poultry farm. How is their breeder birds raised? How is the biosecurity of the breeder bird? Because the moment you bring birds which are of poor quality, then the results alone will be poor even in your farm. Let me say that you get to a breeder farm where the breeder birds are already infected. There are high chances of your bird being infected too. So get good quality birds, even if the prices are very high. That's okay. It's better to get birds of high prices and of good quality than getting birds of low prices of low quality that doesn't bring any sense into the business guys so the gene of the bird matters a lot when it comes to the spread of diseases into your poultry farm you may get a bird and then do all the necessary things on your poultry farm to prevent the spread of diseases on your poultry farm but if now the birds that you have got have now been ill, then there is nothing that you can do. Even if you follow all the things that are needed to prevent the spread of diseases on your poultry farm, then of course you will be doing nothing. Your birds will still die because they now have that disease inside them. Number six is proper disposal of dead birds. At some point you may have your birds dying. A bird or two can die, but you will not know the exact thing which have killed your bird so this kind of birds you must properly dispose them you can either burn them or bury them make sure that the rest of the birds or the living birds cannot get access to these dead birds because there are other diseases which if a bird eats like another dead bird it may also what be infected so by this we will also be reducing the spread of disease by that way on our poultry farm the next one is disinfecting our poultry house yeah especially to poultry farmers who are doing broilers because these birds you will keep them for a short period of time and you need to bring another birds but before you bringing another birds make sure that you first disinfect the house where the previous birds have been staying and then second the litter which the previous birds have been using you must first bring it out, disinfect that house thoroughly before bringing the next batch of birds. The next one is the feeds of the birds. Yeah, the poultry feeds that you normally give to your birds. At some point, I've seen some people with the intention of reducing the cost of the feeds. They tend to buy feeds which are of poor quality. For instance, they will go for the maize which are rotten maize, not knowing that these things cause diseases to our birds. These birds are very sensitive when it comes to poultry feed. And guys, if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, then you are doing a big, big mistake. Do me a favor, subscribe to the channel. That way you can be one of the family members in this awesome YouTube channel. And if you haven't yet liked the video, like the video as well. And don't forget to hit the notification bell. That way you'll never miss out in case I upload a new video. Thanks for watching. See you in my next video. Bye-bye.